Today, the fourth Sunday of Lent is traditionally known as Laetare Sunday because the entrance antiphon in Latin reads Laetare Jerusalem, meaning Rejoice, O Jerusalem. It is a short break from the strict Lenten observances and a time to rejoice as we anticipate the approaching joy of the Easter season. Hence, the rose-colored vestment is worn instead of the Lenten violet color to distinguish this Sunday. Letare Sunday is also known as Mothering Sunday because historically on this day, Christians returned to worship at their mother churches where they were baptized. The theme today, God chooses the unexpected, derives from this, but more specifically from the readings. God chose Jesus' last son, David, to be king. Paul tells the Ephesians that they were once darkness, but now are light in the Lord. And the man born blind, whom Jesus healed, in turn preached about Jesus' divine support to the Jews who sought to discredit Jesus for healing him. In the first reading, God sent Samuel to anoint one of Jesus' sons to replace King Saul. Saul had disobeyed God's orders in 1 Samuel chapter 13 and 15, so God rejected him as king. God told Samuel, I have chosen one of Jesse's sons to be king, so you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. When Samuel saw Jesse's first son, he admired his tall stature and handsome face, qualities he had admired in Saul, and he thought to himself, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. At this point, Samuel was essentially thinking for God and relying on his knowledge, thought, or perception instead of listening to God. But the Lord admonished him, saying, Do not judge from his appearance or his tall stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. God created all things beautiful, but he also gave man the freedom to preserve that beauty which is seen in the heart. So a heart tuned to God is better than a beautiful face. God sees farther and clearer than we can, thus we must always follow his guidance. Peter urged his readers in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, Do not adorn yourself outwardly. Rather, ad adorn your inner self with the lasting beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in God's sight. Therefore, Samuel had to listen to God's spirit again. After God had rejected all the other sons of Jesse, David, who was tending sheep, was brought before Samuel. And the Lord said, There! Anoint him, for this is the one. So Samuel anointed David, and from then on, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon David. God chose David, the youngest son, as he chose Jacob over Esau in Genesis chapter 25 and Ephraim over Manasseh in Genesis chapter 48. So although David was also described as a handsome young man, his smallness contrasts with Paul's height, and when the Spirit came upon David, it departed from Saul. Also, David's portrayal as a shepherd foreshadows his tremendous future, since kings in Israel and the ancient Near East were often described as shepherds. God's choices are always unique. He chooses the unexpected, the least expected. However, God never makes mistakes. He says in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. So David, God's choice, was beautiful in appearance and also beautiful in the heart. For this, he is called a man after God's own heart. See 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. Therefore, let us pray to remain always open to God's voice and direction in the choices that he makes for us daily. 
The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. After the gre greetings in Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, the Jerusalem Bible divides this letter into two major parts. The first deals with the mystery of salvation and of the church in Ephesians 1, 3 to chapter 3, verse 21, while the second is, on ex is an exhortation that is from Ephesians chapter 4 to Ephesians chapter 6. In this second part, St. Paul began his exhortation with a call to unity, chapter 4, verse 1 to 16, followed by a discourse on the new life in Christ and what that life entails, from chapter 4, verse 17 to chapter 5, verse 20. Our verse falls within this discourse on new life in Christ. The new life in Christ is a gift from God. This gift was offered to both Jews and Gentiles, so that even those who grew up in darkness of ignorance, that is the Gentiles, may enjoy the light of Christ and have free access to the Father. Ephesians 2 verse 18 Before coming to know and accept Christ, the Ephesians and other Gentiles were intellectually in the dark and were estranged from God because of the ignorance which is the consequence of their closed minds. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 to 18 In line with the topic of our reflection for this Sunday, the Gentiles are the unexpected that God has chosen through whom He wants to reveal His glory. The Jews were the chosen people, but their stubbornness has opened the way for the Gentiles. We remember what St. Paul told the people that gathered to listen to him at Antioch in Pisidia in Acts chapter 13 verses 46 to 47. He says, We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, that is the Jews, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, here and now we turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when He said, I have made you a light to the nations, so that my salvation may reach the remotest parts of the earth. So, the Gentiles that were considered uncircumcised, unclean, and heirs of destruction have now become the enlightened and favored people of God. By accepting Christ, those who were once darkness or were living in darkness have now become light in the Lord. We are not just living in the light, but have become light. And as light, we ought to shine and illumine our world. When we shine, darkness and the work of darkness will be defeated. Accepting Christ who enlightens us involves intellectual consent. To shine, however, our wills must be involved. This becomes the practical dimension of our life as Christians and as light in the world. Practically, therefore, we should seek complete goodness, right living, and truth. We ought to also avoid shameful practices, things we know are contrary to upright living. The light of Christ has given us the wisdom to distinguish what is good and what is bad because we are in the new covenant that Jeremiah spoke of when he said, Look, the days are coming, Adonai declares, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Within them I shall plant my law, writing it on their hearts. There will be no further need for anyone to teach neighbor or brother. No, they will all know me. Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come to know the truth in Christ Jesus who has chosen us for salvation. The next step is our Christian journey, that is the next step in our Christian journey to, is to practice the truth. When we do, we radiate Christ's glory to the world. When we refuse to live by the truth of the gospel, we become darkness itself. Today's gospel is from the encounter of Jesus with a man born blind in John chapter 9, 1 to 41. The story unfolds gradually from doubt to faith, from one considered a sinner to one who professed Jesus as Lord, from one despised by the Jewish authorities to one chosen by God for a mission of preaching Jesus. Jesus spotted this man and his disciples questioned Jesus about who sinned, the man or his parents. It was believed that wicked, sinful behavior led to suffering and punishment. Therefore, those with physical disabilities were considered sinners, 
or their conditions were related to the sins of their parents. In this instance, Jesus corrected the disciples that God permits some conditions to reveal his power. So neither the man nor his parents sinned. This is a reminder to us not to be too quick to judge or condemn others, especially those who have some form of disability. Jesus spat on the ground, made mud with his saliva, anointed the man's eyes, and asked him to go and wash at the pool of Siloam. Saliva was associated with magical practices in the Greco-Roman world. But this action of Jesus may take our minds back to the creation of the human being from the dust of the earth. Jesus recreates this man's sight. He asked the man to wash at Siloam, part of a river system of the city of David. If you read Isaiah 7 verse 3, 36 verse 2, and Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 15. It was believed that people could be healed when they went into the pool of Siloam. The man went, washed at the pool, and his eyes opened. The neighbors were amazed and wondered what had happened, while others doubted he was the same person. The man affirmed he was the one. When they questioned how he received his sight, he told them that the man, Jesus, made him see. At this point, Jesus was only a mere human being. They brought the man to the Pharisees, who also questioned him and declared that whoever healed him on the Sabbath was not from God. The man defended Jesus and declared him to be a prophet, since he could perform a miracle which had never been heard of. So there is a movement from being a mere man to a prophet. The Pharisees doubted that the man was born blind, invited his parents, who confirmed he was born blind. However, the parents were afraid to affirm the healing for fear of being cast out by the Jewish leaders. How often are we afraid to stand for the truth? The man who received the healing stood for it and defended Jesus. He became a preacher to the Pharisees and an instrument to preach God's word. The Pharisees were blind to the connection between the miracle and the promised Messiah. When Jesus met the man again, he asked if he believed in the Son of Man. The man was ready to believe anything Jesus said. When Jesus introduced himself as the Son of Man, the man worshipped Jesus as Lord. So there is a movement from a mere human being to a prophet to being Lord. His eyes have been opened physically and spiritually. He grew in faith. But the Pharisees who claimed to see were blind spiritually. Sadly, the Pharisees could not even notice they were blind and continued to claim they could see. We too may be blind. We must be humble before God and let Jesus cure us of our spiritual blindness. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.